So today we're going to talk about the worst books that I read in 2018. These are just my least favorite. I think they're all two stars. One of them I think I rated three stars, but like upon thinking back on it, I don't have good feelings at all and way more things about it annoy me now. So I'll get into that in a minute. If you guys like these books, you can like these books, obviously. This is just my opinion. Sometimes I get real salty, so sorry not sorry. So getting into the books, I'll get this one out of the way first because this one will probably make the most people mad. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. Everyone said this book was so good, or at least on Goodreads, I feel like it gets like top-notch reviews, and I don't know if it's just because the subject matter makes people automatically want to give it more stars because it's like an experience that someone had gone through, but the way that this book was written, or at least maybe not how it was written, but how my mind seemed to read the tone of the book, was that nothing was really as impactful as it should have been or could have been, or like it didn't affect her the way that you would assume it would. Obviously this is a memoir so it's kind of hard to judge someone's life experience but as far as like the writing goes I just really didn't care for it. I think the experiences that she had and the things that happened to her were obviously terrible but the actual written down part of it I didn't enjoy. There's a part in this book, actually I think I tabbed it. So there's a part in this book when she's a kid and she does get raped which is really really horrible and I am not like making light of that situation but even when she told that part of the story it was so quick like it just happened and then it was done and she moved on and obviously like she wrote about how it affected her but there was like no emotion in it it was just very cold and I feel like because the story was written in such a cold kind of nonchalant way that's also how I felt about it and I just didn't enjoy this book and I get it's not like subject matter you enjoy but I didn't enjoy my time reading it it took me a really long time to get through so there's this one part and she decides that she wants to go out and have sex. I can't remember exactly what the point of this was, but she literally just goes, walks down a street, asks some guy from her school if he wants to sleep with her, and then they go and do it. And then it says, thanks to Mr. Freeman, nine years before the man who abused her, I had no pain of entry to endure, and because of the absence of romantic involvement, neither of us felt much had happened. And then it's just done and she just goes on her way and then she ends up pregnant. But it's just like the way that she says it so nonchalantly about thanks to this guy, da 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 da. I get that maybe she was being sarcastic, but it just didn't sit well with me. Like I just didn't like it. Her parents suck. She's back and forth between her grandparents and her parents and her moms and her dads and she tells some stories and I just, I didn't meld with this book at all. I just, just didn't like it. Next is The Killing Jar by Jennifer Bosworth. I'm pretty sure on Goodreads I rated this one three stars, but honestly, the more I think about it and the more I've read this year and look back and reflect on this book, it's not a good book. It's like, I feel like the beginning started really strong and I should update my review because I think I was easier on it than I should have been. But in the beginning of the book, it starts off fairly strong. Like, it's a YA book, so I kind of still give it a little bit of leeway to be immature, but it starts off kind of creepy. She has these weird powers, and you don't really know what they mean. She uh, she kills a kid, and then, like, grows up from there. No one knows what happened. Blah, 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 blah. Fast forward, she starts finding out more about these powers, and she goes to live in this commune where her mom grew up, and she meets her grandmother. And at the commune, like, you... I thought it was going to be kind of more scary, creepy, I guess, but it goes on this huge tangent and it almost feels like filler where she's like, I think it's called anima is what they call it. And it's like where you essentially like suck the life out of stuff and she can do it from flowers and bugs and animals and all kinds of things you can take this anima from. And apparently it just makes them super high. So she spends a large portion of this book running around fields taking life from like plants and tiny creatures and like getting super high. It's pretty much like she just runs around smoking joints but instead of like smoking joints she's stealing the life from things. And obviously near the end it starts to become darker again but I feel like the middle part of this book was very just filler and fluffy and it didn't fit with what I thought the book was going to be. And then further than that 
It was very repetitive in her thought process. She was constantly mad at her mother, which I get it, angsty teens. She was supposedly in love with this guy, but she couldn't touch him because she was worried about killing him. And then at this commune, she like falls head over heels in five seconds for this other guy. And then most of that when she's not getting high is her going, do I want this guy or 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 this guy? And I got really sick of listening to that part because what did that have to do with her powers and this whole other thing and the whole rest of the story? Like, it just felt like they needed to make the story longer, so they had to throw in all this unnecessary drama. The next book on the list is Into the Water. This follows the story of a bunch of women who have either committed suicide or been murdered at this specific part of the river in this town. There's, like, a cliff and then this area in the river that's, like, um... I don't know if it's fast moving or whatever, this area that they call the drowning pool. And they call it that because there's been multiple women who have died there and they don't know how it happened or what happened. Now, this story, I felt like for me, it just didn't wow me. Like, I gave it about 50 pages to really pull me in and it didn't. Like, I was still kind of dreading finishing the book. There were way too many characters in this story for it to, for me to care for. The characters seemed really dumb to me. I just wasn't into it. I feel like fairly early on you could figure out the chain of events that kind of happened and if you really pay attention it's very easy to go back from there. It wasn't like this wow moment at the end. It was kind of like yeah that's what I guessed and when you get to the end of the book and you're like yep that wrapped up the way I assumed it was going to it's kind of a letdown and then also further than that after you find out what happened the author goes on to wrap up every single character's story and I feel like there's like six or seven main characters. It goes on to tell you what happened to like every single person and their feelings and all this stuff. And it just felt so like, I already felt like the book dragged out and then it dragged out more. So I really didn't enjoy this one. I haven't read a lot of thrillers, so I really can't compare it to a lot of things. But I felt like the characters were really annoying. They were really unlikable and I just didn't care. I didn't care about like any of them. Next, we have A Bend in the Road by Nicholas Sparks. This one I didn't have high hopes for, and so my hopes were pretty much confirmed. I think I just learned that romance novels are not my thing. I don't mind romance in novels, but I don't like that to be like the main thing, and I feel like that was like the main thing in this book. Everything that happened around it was just like happening so that there could be drama in this relationship. And I just didn't enjoy it. It's about a man whose wife gets killed in a hit and run car accident. And then he ends up falling in love very, 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 very quickly and abruptly with his son's teacher. And then blah, 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 drama, done. This story, just their love story, like, it, there was no build to it. It was like, oh, I see my son's teacher. Uh, I'm going to make a weird joke when I talk to her one time. Now we're dating six months later. I don't know if it was six months, but like it just all went very fast. And I don't even hate Insta Love all the time, but I just felt like the main character, like he was written in a way that he was really annoying. Like if I was with someone who just flew off the handle like this and like had like his emotions were just like making him ragey whenever he saw fit, like not that he was like abusive or anything, but he was like a really angry man. Maybe that was just because his wife died. I don't know. But I really didn't have high hopes for this. I don't plan on reading any more Nicholas Sparks books because I really don't want to shit on people's authors that they enjoy when I'm like, like, I feel like if I pick this up, it's going to be a hate read. If I read any more, it's going to be just to see how bad it is. So I probably won't read any more Nicholas Sparks or any more like romance novels, I don't think. Now, last book we have here is The Home for Unwanted Girls by Joanna Goodman. I will put a card to the reading vlog I did of this. This story, I had such high hopes for. I was so excited to read this book. I thought it was going to be so good, and it was so bad. It was so corny. The characters were all annoying. Everyone was really selfish and just rude, and the main character was just like, she was a crappy person. I had a very hard time even feeling bad for her because she was just as bad as all the people who weren't very kind to her for the most part. I just really hated her character. I didn't like that she somehow justified cheating on her husband because she wanted to make sure that the guy that she wanted to be with was really that guy before she broke up with her husband, who was also a giant dick. Like, didn't have no love lost for that guy, but like still, you don't cheat on people. Anyway, this is the story of a girl who gets pregnant as a young, I think she's 15 or 16, 
Um, there's a very unnecessary rape in this book that has nothing, it doesn't add anything to the story except for like this much drama and it's not enough to make it worth that particular scene in the book. I just thought it was like extra crap that they threw in there to be like shocking just for the sake of being shocking. I just didn't, I didn't like anything about this book. They're super obsessed with talking about how much English-speaking Canadians and French-speaking Canadians hate each other. I get that that's kind of a thing, I guess, but like to the amount that it was written about in this book was just annoying. It was so annoying. And even her uh, daughter that gets put into like the system, she, I didn't even like her. There was like one chapter that I actually really enjoyed in this book and I think it was like, it's like the daughter's romance story somewhere in here that I actually liked. I thought that part was promising, but then everything just went downhill again. And then there's this one part in this book where the daughter is like, she's living in the orphanage and the nuns are talking about her to some family and they're like, and she's even talking already and she's four. And I'm like, she's four years old. That would be kind of weird if she wasn't talking, like not a surprising thing that a four-year-old can talk. And then like, so two years or three years later, something happens with the orphanages where they, and this happened in real life, where they turn the orphanages into insane asylums. I think it's so the government gives them more money or so the government has to pay less money. I can't remember how that works. And they put all of the mentally ill people in with the children in the orphanages. They stopped teaching the children any kind of um, schooling or anything like that. That really did happen. That was a true thing that happened. And this book is based kind of around that situation in Quebec, uh, Canada. But the way that it was written, like, so at four year old, four years old, they're astonished that she can talk, and then at seven, she's, like, wiping butts and bathing, uh, like, older, mentally ill people. Like, I think I gave it two stars. In my mind, I would probably give it one, just because the writing was so corny. The orange was all things that I hated, and there was a couple of, like, parts that I was like, okay, that's not so bad, and I tagged them in pink. But I just, I had such high hopes for this book, and it just, they were dashed. I did not enjoy this story at all. I super hated it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, my five worst reads of the year. Let me know down below if you've read any of these, whether you agree or disagree. Let me know what your worst book of this year is, because I think that would be kind of awesome to see. And I will talk to you all soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!